The accessories that come with the Husqvarna Viking Designer Diamond Royale are quite extensive, so I want to show you what comes with the machine and where to put them. First off, I've gone ahead and loaded most of my most popular feet right up here in the front. Now, the A foot is your standard foot, and your machine will always tell you which foot to put on for each stitch. Sometimes it will be a B foot. This is a foot that has a little cutout on the back side where heavier stitches can flow without being restricted. Foot D is a blind hem foot, and when you pick a blind hem stitch, it'll tell you to put that foot on. And we'll do some videos where we'll cheat and use this foot for a few other things. Now, H is a foot that is a non-stick foot. So on the back side, there is a coating that allows it to stitch on vinyls or leathers. Now, there's also two other pieces that come with your machine. They look like little yellow stickers. Well, on one side, they are non-stick. So you can peel these off, put them onto the underneath side of any other metal foot and have the same resistance that uh, allows the machine to slow smoothly over those sticky like fabrics. So don't throw those away. Those are actually quite handy. I just let them hang out in the bottom of the accessory box back here where I'm going to start to put some of our extra feet. Next we have a C foot. C, oh, excuse me, J. J is actually an overlock foot. So any of our stitches that are set to do an overlock stitch will switch on over and tell you J. The one that has all the red lines, that's a quarter inch stitch. Now we'll do a video on how to perfect your quarter inch stitch and so show you some of the other options you have for making an exact quarter inch seam allowance. Now C, C is actually a buttonhole foot. You actually have two C feet. One is a manual one. Now do notice why this one sits here in this place. So when you look down here, there's a little opening for this little nub to sit. So if it sits over here, it sticks too far up so your accessory box doesn't close um, very easily, but if you fit it where it's supposed to go, that uh, it fits so much nicer. Also a clear foot. Oh wait, let's hear. The other buttonhole foot is the C foot that is automatic, has this uh, wheel on it, actually plugs into your machine, you can tell the machine how long you want your buttonhole, and then it's ready to go. So we'll put that one back here in the back compartment. You have a clear B foot. So this is just like the first one we showed you down here. It's cut out on the underneath side, but you've got red lines to follow and keep lined up when you're doing decorative stitches. Now some of your decorative stitches actually stitch super wide and it will have you put on the S foot. So it's a multi-directional foot, really help keep your stitches nice and perfect. And the last one here is E. So E is a zipper foot, and that can be attached on the left or right, depending on which side of the zipper you're sewing on. Over here you have some empty holes that be can be placement for a needle that you've used slightly. You want to drop that in there, and the opening over here would be for a double needle. Your bobbins will sit right up in the front, and this is actually removable. So if you want to have that somewhere else or wind a bunch of bobbins and then reattach it, load it up, and get it ready. That's a great idea that they put on here that that can be removed. Okay, some of the other items that we're going to put into the back. You have a sensor Q foot. This is going to be your embroidery foot. So you'll put that on. It's kind of spring loaded, so it takes just a little bit to kind of get the hang of how to squeeze it to have, um, attach to the machine. But once it's on, it's the perfect foot for embroidery. You have an R foot. It also can be used for free motion, and it also would be a great one. Um, you can. Don't use it for embroidery, but definitely free motion. There are better ones, but you do at least have something to do a little free motion with. You have a steam ripper and cleaning tools, yay. I'm gonna show you how to clean and oil, the, not oil, clean this machine. We do not oil this machine. And, uh, but where we can go and clean out all the lint and dust. This is actually a multi-purpose tool. So it's got a thick and a thin side. It even has a place to drop a needle in and easily help you insert it, hold it while you uh, take it out or put it back into the machine. You have a air erase pen that comes with the machine. You have needles of all different sizes, so it's nice to have a little variety pack. A cleaning tool for, or cloth for your screen. All right, getting down to the last couple ones. Some of the um, spool caps, you'll find some are up here. You'll put those on based on how big of a spool you're working with, and some you can even put on the vertical spool pin, and then there are some felt pads you can put on so the spool doesn't get spinning away on those. So any that are extra, I just put into the back part. 
you have some thread nets. So if you ever have some thread, it's kind of falling off the spool, you can go and put that on and um, kind of contain it. Sometimes some of those slivery threads, slippery threads, even metallic threads sometimes need a little help. A screwdriver that's going to do uh, and get your needle in and out. It's also going to lift the throat plate on and off as we do that. Speaking of throat plates, did you notice you have an extra one? This is a single stitched throat plate. There's a hole in the center. It's the only place you can do. Once you put this on, it will only let you stitch a straight stitch. Uh, this is great for when you're piecing um, corner to corner on blocks or just getting nice accurate seam allowances. You can use this for embroidery and free motion quilting. Now, as soon as that goes on, that machine will make sure that you don't accidentally um, pick a stitch that will break a needle on either side. So that's kind of a new feature. You do have to go and turn it off though. Once you pull this off, you have to turn that off manually. Some people forget that that's the case and the machine will come up with a message if you don't do that. Uh, so we'll put our screwdriver back there. Also, you have your USB stick. This will hold a ton of designs when we get over to the embroidery side. Take that little cord and wrap it around the little end here, and that keeps it nice and safe. When I'm not using it, I usually also keep it back here. And the last thing, because you have a designer Royale, you also are included the dual feed foot with both the exchangeable feet. So one is an open toe foot and one is a quarter inch foot. Great for sewing bindings on. There is a, th there's other ones you can add to this walking foot but if you uh, my favorite one is the one that has the blade down the middle so it's like a stitch in the ditch foot buy that one you'll be happy um, and it really works great and then there's guides to help you stay nice and even if you're doing lots of lines for channeling so there is a ton of accessories that come with this machine so a few other items um, in with your manual you have a USB cord that connects your computer directly to this machine so you can send designs directly to it if your machine and computer are in the same room. So if that's what you like to do, you have the cord to do it as well. All right, let's get started with threading it up and sewing and figuring out all the parts and pieces of this machine. <laughs> 